This video is brought to you by Mine. Reclaim your data. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and you're watching Gadget Match. As we end the first of a three month long jam packed tech season, two big smartphone launches took place today. One is by Xiaomi, launching a trio of new smartphones, the Mi 10T, the Mi 10T Pro, and the Mi 10T Lite. Today, I have the most premium model with me, which starts at just under 600 euros. And I'm interested to take a look because last year's Mi 9T was very popular among fans. Some even dubbed it as the best mid-range smartphone of 2019. But Xiaomi is following a different formula this year. And this, it's not meant to be a mid-range smartphone. So where does it fall in Xiaomi's lineup of smartphones and how well does it perform? Keep watching, cause we've got the answers. This is our Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro unboxing and review. Before we dive into our unboxing, if you like unboxing videos and review videos and you need help picking the right device to match your lifestyle, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and help us reach our next milestone. We've got a lot to cover, so let's breeze through this unboxing. Lifting this lid up, there's a smaller box that says designed by Xiaomi. And inside, a SIM tray ejector, user guides, a USB-C to headphone jack dongle, and a frosted finished TPU case, with the words Xiaomi plastered in big, bold letters. Next up is the Mi 10T Pro with its four key features. We'll set it aside for now. Finally, a 33 watt charging adapter and a USB-C to A cable. Take a look at these two phones and give me a guess, which of them costs a thousand euros? I'm going to bet that most of you are going to pick this phone, but you're wrong. And it's quite unprecedented for a company to do such a thing, but it is what it is. And the Mi 10T Pro is a looker with its glossy back and aluminum frame. It's available in three finishes, cosmic black, Lunar Silver, and Aurora Blue. My Cosmic Black review unit has a chrome-like mirror finish. It's high gloss and picks up fingerprints and smudges. It's much larger than the Mi 10, closer to the size of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. In the hands, the weight feels well distributed. It doesn't feel too heavy. Like many phones this year, it's got a huge camera module, so it doesn't rest balanced on the table. I like its rounded corners and curved back. There's nothing about it that makes it feel anything less than a premium device. And when you flip it around, it's got a flat display with a selfie camera punch hole on its top left-hand side. Buttons are flushed against the right-hand side of the device, a volume rocker, and a power button with a built-in fingerprint scanner. I've said this before, I prefer to have it here than having it built underneath the display. It's faster and more reliable. Up top, there's an IR blaster, and on the bottom, a dual nano SIM card slot, USB-C port, and speaker grills. The earpiece also doubles as speakers for stereo audio. And while we're on the topic, sound quality is pretty good. Not the loudest we've heard this year, and definitely better than the Samsung Galaxy S20 series. It's also worth mentioning that the front firing speakers out of the earpiece are sufficiently loud, so when you're watching a video on YouTube, for example, the audio comes at you. And lastly, because it's on last year's Mi 9T Pro, there's no longer a headphone jack. Spec obsessed users will appreciate the Mi 10T Pro is powered by the top of the line Snapdragon 865 processor with eight gigabytes of RAM, sufficiently enough to plow through your favorite game and enough for shuffling between many different apps. It also has a super fast display, not just 120 Hertz, but 144. Seen only on gaming phones like the ROG Phone 3. It's not an AMOLED panel, but an LCD. Xiaomi is calling it a dot display and it caps off at full HD plus resolution. From the settings app, you can also set it to a fixed 60 or 90 Hertz or an adaptive 144 Hertz, meaning it will adjust the refresh rate depending on what it is you're doing. 
There's already a wide selection of games that support 144Hz, so theoretically, hardcore mobile gamers on a budget will love this device. But I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference until games like Call of Duty or PUBG support these faster refresh rates on a mobile device. If you look at the massive camera module on the back of the Mi 10T Pro, you'd assume that it packs more cameras than one would need. But in actuality, it only has three. Let me break them down for you. This big one up here is the main camera, wide with a 108 megapixel sensor, capable of shooting 8K footage. Underneath it is a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with a 120 degree field of view. And last but not the least, a five megapixel macro camera. All right, let's take a look at some photos. Our day's off to an early start at our favorite neighborhood cafe. This coffee is as creamy as it looks in the photo. I, on the other hand, am as tired as I look. Haven't slept yet, but here I am enjoying some early morning sun and embracing the bangs. The Mi 10T Pro does a good job of not blowing out the highlights. It also did a good job of cutting me out from the scene for that portrait mode blur. Chai, on the other hand, looks more rested and has a smile on her face. The photo was shot against the light and the phone's auto HDR kicked in, keeping the sky behind her a lovely shade of blue. Compared to other phones we've tested, the Mi 10T Pro doesn't amp up saturation or contrast, so on a bright sunny day, the sky is a pale blue. Overall, I would have hoped for a bit more punch, like here, which I had intended to be an artsy shot. More contrast would have made it more dramatic. Again, in these next two shots taken on a rainy day, I would have loved more vibrance in the pumpkins and these ears of corn. I will give the phone credit, however, for its shallow depth of field, although sometimes it seems to dial up the aperture artificially, like in this example, where there appears to be a radial blur around the flower. For this next shot, I'm bringing in the Note 20 Ultra for an extreme low-light night mode side-by-side. -side. While the Mi 10T Pro managed a decent photo despite the lack of available light, the Note 20 Ultra is still in a different league. Next, let's take a look at the ultra wide angle camera. Xiaomi claims that this camera has a 123 degree field of view, but in my tests, it's not as wide as the Note 20 Ultra and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which both have 120 degree fields of view. So something is amiss here. That said, none of these photos are worth complaining about. Finally, let's talk about that third camera. I would have much rather preferred a telephoto camera, like Xiaomi included in the Mi 9T Pro, but they decided to go for a macro lens with a focus distance of two centimeters, which from these samples does a reasonable job. But its use is more niche. It's not even in the camera menu by default, but you can add it in with some customizations. Xiaomi also included a few fun cam features. One of them is called clone mode, which lets you take up to four shots and stitch them together for something like this. Except that three chais is my worst nightmare, but hey, it works in video. There's also a whole bunch of creative long exposure modes. Up front, there's a 20 megapixel selfie camera, and here are some samples. The Mi 10T Pro has one of the largest batteries Xiaomi has ever put on a smartphone, 5,000 milliamp hours. And in the few days that I've used it, the phone lasted me a full day and a half of average use. The phone supports 33 watt fast charging and comes with a 33 watt fast charger in the box. Charging times are pretty impressive, 22% in 10 minutes, 61% in 30, and 100% in just a smidgen over an hour. Xiaomi actually has pretty impressive fast wireless charging tech, but they've decided not to include wireless charging on this device. A reasonable concession to make to bring the price down, and of course, because it charges pretty fast anyway. If you could make a wild guess, how many companies have your data stored on their servers? What would that number be? Considering that we sign up for new web services all the time, chances are, for many of us, that number is larger than we think. What I got was a whopping 839. That is why I'm happy to talk about this video's sponsor. 
It's a service called Mine, and it couldn't be easier to use. Just sign in with your Gmail, Microsoft, or Yahoo account, and Mine will map out your digital footprint. Here's what my results look like. I recommend going in and seeing what kind of data each company has stored. Sometimes that might include sensitive info like your home address or credit card number. Information that you can never get back in the event of a data breach. And you've probably heard of that happening before, even to large companies. Apps I haven't used in a while have no reason to hold on to my data. For example, I don't even remember ever signing up for OMG sweeps. And based on internet regulations, that data belongs to me. So it's time we step up and say mine. Just hit reclaim my data and mine will send a delete my data email from your account. Usually within a day or so, the company will email you back saying, yep, we've deleted your data. The service is currently free, but they'll be switching to a subscription model very soon. So you'll want to check it out right now. All you have to do is click on the link in the description box below or visit saymine.com. So is the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro your gadget match? I remember starting this year off quite bothered by the soaring prices of phones that I was reviewing, especially when I reviewed the 1000 euro Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. It just wasn't the price point that I expected a Xiaomi phone to ever breach. Thankfully, the second half of the year brings about more affordable options, albeit with some compromises. So how did Xiaomi do? Let's revisit Gadget Match's list of non-negotiables and optionals. They've almost followed this checklist to a T. Every single non-negotiable the Mi 10T Pro delivers on, but every single optional is skipped. Of course, I'm going to say these were the right choices to make. This phone is well balanced in the sense that it satisfies the needs of the spec obsessed among us and also makes the penny pinchers happy. If I were to just have one complaint, I wish the phone would do a little bit better in low light and that third camera should have been a telephoto lens instead of a macro camera. That said, this is a great phone, one that I hesitate to call a mid-ranger because it is not. This year, we've seen the full spectrum from Xiaomi, an insane wraparound display concept, a phone with maxed out specs, including the world's fastest wired and wireless charging. And then we have the humble Mi 10T Pro that doesn't push as hard, does enough, and doesn't break the bank. And for that, we bestow upon it the Gadget Match seal of approval. This is the phone I expected the Mi 10 Pro to be. The question is, is it a little bit too late? Have phones like the OnePlus Nord or the Pixel 5 that launched today captured the imagination of Xiaomi's fan base? Let me know what you think by sounding off in the comments section below. As always, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload new videos. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make GadgetMatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.